Hi everyone. My name is Avi Cooper and I'm a pulmonary and critical care physician at Ohio State. Um, and I'm excited to be hosting this Facebook Live today talking about um, coronavirus and the uh, mild to moderate and severe ways that the virus can manifest. A little bit of background about me. Uh, I see patients uh, in the outpatient setting as a pulmonologist. Right now, most of my time is being spent in the intensive care unit taking care of um, coronavirus patients with the most severe manifestations of the disease. So today for this event, I'm gonna be talking about the spectrum of coronavirus and how it can manifest. And we'll talk a little bit about um, uh, kind of what to do if you think that you might have coronavirus. So uh, the coronavirus itself uh, seems to manifest in different ways and lots of different ways um, in patients. And, you know, the numbers, we're still not sure exactly how many people um, have the virus, but there's a suspicion that a, a vast majority of people uh, that uh, have the virus may actually not even know they have it. And it's an extremely contagious virus, which is why it's spread around the world so quickly. Um, and the people that uh, don't know that they have it can spread it to others pretty easily. And so that's why the social distancing measures that have been in place have been so important. Some people that have coronavirus have very mild symptoms, basically feel like they just have a cold, um, cough, um, congestion, maybe feeling a little bit um, malaise. And um, that seems to be, again, of the people who have symptoms of coronavirus, that, that is a very common way for it to manifest. Some people have uh, even more severe symptoms um, and they feel like they have the flu. I mean, they really don't feel good. Um, you know, a lot of fatigue, um, but it doesn't, or maybe even a little bit of shortness of breath, but it doesn't get to the point that they need to, to go to the hospital. Um, and an even smaller percentage of patients with coronavirus get sick enough that they do need to come to the hospital. And this can manifest usually in the form of having trouble breathing. And coronavirus is a, uh, a virus that seems to particularly affect the lungs. And so often that's what brings patients to the hospital is, is feeling like they're not breathing well. Um, and an even smaller percentage of the patients with coronavirus. So again, we're talking about a very small percentage of the patients who have this virus, but because there are so many people getting infected with it, we are seeing a lot of patients with these severe manifestations of the virus, which is if they get critically ill. Um, and that's who I take care of in the intensive care unit. And so these people need a lot of oxygen and they, they sometimes even need to go on a ventilator. Um, and so uh, th obviously that, that is the most severe manifestation. Um, but thankfully, um, most patients don't get that sick. We're still trying to figure out what makes people susceptible to get as sick as uh, the patients do that need to come to the ICU. Uh, and there may be uh, genetic influences. Um, there, uh, it seems like uh, older patients and those with um, health problems already may be more susceptible. Uh, but I think you know we're still trying to understand that. Um, and you know it's it's very uh, important um, to kind of realize what to do if you think you might have the virus. And again, if you if you have some of the more mild symptoms, um, we're you know we're recommending self quarantining at home, and really kind of trying to stay away from other people to avoid spreading the virus around. Um, and again, this could be as simple as having a fever or maybe a little bit of GI upset, feeling like you know just kind of not feeling well. Um, if you're feeling 
like you might actually feel sick, you know, we, we are recommending calling your primary care doctor and connecting with them to see if uh, you you should be tested for the coronavirus or if um, we would say make what we call a presumptive diagnosis, which is um, just saying you probably have it based on what's going on in the world right now. Um, but if you're feeling well enough to stay at home, then you know you wouldn't need to come come into the hospital. But your primary care doctor will be able to to help kind of figure out if you if you need to um, uh, to be to be seen, say in the emergency room. Um, so that's about all that I had to say. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that people have, so you can type them in, um, and I'll do my best to uh, you know to answer them to the best of my my ability. So we got a question that said, what do you think of Ohio starting to open? Um, so the um, Governor DeWine has done, a, 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 and uh, Amy Acton have done a fantastic job of um, uh, putting in social distancing measures to, you know, to protect it, to protect us and to protect the spread of the virus. And that's why we are seeing what we would call a, more of a, hopefully a flatter curve here in Ohio. Um, we still are seeing more cases, um, and, but, you know, we've been ready for it. And, um, you know, uh, we've been able to put a plan in place for that. In terms of opening up, you know, that's kind of above, uh, beyond my ability to say, when is the right time to open up? That's more of an epidemiological and policy question um, beyond the level of, a, of an individual physician like myself. Um, the next question was, uh, why a presumptive diagnosis? So the, I use the term presumptive diagnosis mean, to mean basically we uh, assume that if you have the symptoms that fit with coronavirus right now, um, uh, it's more than likely that you might have it. And uh, our testing capabilities are still ramping up and not everyone meets criteria to be tested for it. And so if you have um, you know, patients who have a fever, but who don't meet criteria for testing, we're saying you, we're gonna, we'll make a presumptive diagnosis of coronavirus and then recommend self-quarantining at home. Uh, the next question was, how long do you think the virus has been here? Um, that that is, is really hard to say. Um, you know, because I think we, we are still trying to understand um, its prevalence, meaning how common it, how, how, how much it has spread in the community, especially with people who don't, um, uh, uh, who don't have symptoms. And so I'd say that's, that's very difficult to say. Um, so someone asked if I can talk about asthma and virus. Um, so it's a good question. And so I had mentioned that people with um, uh, other medical problems may be more susceptible to having more severe manifestations of the disease. And I would, I would say that that is true for asthma as well. Um, and so uh, I think it, it underscores the importance of if you have asthma being on top of that and managing it and trying to keep your lungs as healthy as possible. Um, and then obviously being really careful with um, social distancing um, to avoid contacting the virus. Um, there was a question about reinfection. Um, and that is something that we don't know yet. Um, there's a lot of work going on to um, uh, learn about the immune response to the virus and what it means in terms of having um, say being able to detect an antibody to the coronavirus in someone's blood, does that mean that they cannot be reinfected? And I would say we don't we don't know that. I'd say there's hope that that's true, but we don't know right now. Um, but that's something that that um, researchers are actively looking at. Um, so there was a question about is it safe to run in parks when there are a lot of people around? So we are still encouraging people to, to be active and to be outside and um, to be, uh, you know, if that's something that, you know, to exercise. Um, 
it's, it's important to remember that in those situations to still keep the social distancing, that being outside doesn't, pro doesn't necessarily protect you if you're in close contact with someone, if they have the virus from contracting it from them. So the same social distancing measures that we recommend um, still apply even if say you're jogging outside. Um, so it was a question about pulmonary fibrosis. So that, again, that, that would be the same in terms of susceptibility to severe manifestations of the virus. That would be the, the, same, um, the same concern as, say, asthma. You know, patients with lung disease are susceptible. Um, so that, uh, that would be another patient population group of patients that um, really do need to be careful to try to avoid contacting the virus just like everyone else. Um, so there was a question about um, uh, bed capacity uh, in Ohio. So I, I can't speak for the rest of the state. I know that there um, are, are very detailed plans in place to ensure that there is adequate capacity um, for uh, uh, here in uh, here in Columbus to make sure that anyone that needs care um, for coronavirus in a hospital setting um, will get it and so um, including ICU level care and so um, I think our, our, our leadership um, in, uh, in at Ohio State and other hospitals in the city and um, you know in the, the state level leadership have done a fantastic job of being prepared for this um, So there was a question about false negative testing. And so that is something that um, is a possibility. Uh, some patients um, like we've had in the hospital can test negative initially and then they test positive later. And it all has to do with how much virus is being shed from the nose, because that's where what's usually tested via a nasal, nasal swab. And so um, unfortunately there is a potential for false negative tests, although um, you know, we hope, we think that that's not a common event. Um, so there was a question about hydroxychloroquine. And so, uh, this is something that, um, the, you know, the medical community is still trying to learn, um, what are effective antivirals and what are not. And there are a lot of trials going on right now for all the different drugs. Um, and that would ultimately be a, um, kind of a one-to-one -one decision with your, um, with your healthcare provider about which medications you'd be a candidate for. So there's a question about childhood asthma um, that they grew out of. Um, I think that's really hard. And then well, if they got the coronavirus, would they be more susceptible? That's really hard to say. I'd say in general, again, it would just be um, the same, the same advice applies that social distancing and um, avoiding contact um, you know, uh, with people who might have the virus is, is very, uh, very important. There was a question about if albuterol can make symptoms worse. I, I've not seen any information that, that definitively says that that is true. Um, there was a question about how, how long a low-grade infection can linger. So that, that's a good question, and we don't know how long people um, who have the coronavirus can, can um, infect others. Um, uh, there's some you know, I've seen some literature that um, you might, that there may be viral shedding for, for um, even for a few weeks. We don't know if that person can infect others after that long of a period of time. I'd say that's still an open question. So there was a comment about the albuterol question. So again, I, I, I would agree with that, that again, I would not be afraid of using your albuterol at home. Um, there is no, I have not seen any information that says that albuterol is a problem in coronavirus. And um, uh, I, we're recommending that patients stay on their standard asthma and COPD inhaler regimens. They don't make any changes to that. There's a question about open heart bypass survivor and what, what the risk is of coronavirus. So um, as I said before, anybody with a, um, uh, a pre-existing medical problem um, is at a little bit of a higher risk 
to have more severe manifestations and, and obviously should be careful. Um, so I think we have time for probably one more question. Um, so does obesity increase your chance of getting coronavirus and having a severe case? There is some literature that, that that is an active area of investigation about what effect obesity has um, on the susceptibility to coronavirus. Um, so I'd say that's something that has um, uh, interested researchers and is actively being looked at what effect obesity has. Um, I think we're out of time. It has been a pleasure to, um, to be here and speak with you. Um, and uh, I think this video uh, should be record is recorded and will be uh, posted as well. So take care, everyone. And thank you for your questions.